Hi guys, my name is Sarvan Kumar, your economy faculty. Welcome to Rathod's IAS Economic Weekly Series. As usual, even this week, we are going to look at a lot of current affairs with respect to the economy, particularly from the perspective of UPSC. Right? So without wasting any time, let us go to the topics. So the first topic of the day is, the RBI to focus on inflation lifts estimates. Now, here, let me give a perspective for you so that you can understand what this RBI is lifting inflation and RBI concentration of inflation is all about. See guys, see, let me give an example for you. Understand, imagine this is a bank. Imagine this is a bank and this bank is going to give 100 rupees as a loan. This bank is ready to give 100 rupees as a loan. Now imagine two persons have took a loan from it. This guy took loan 50 rupees. And this guy also took the loan amount of 50 rupees from the bank. Now with the loan that they have taken, what they are going to do with the loan that they have taken, right? They are going to see, imagine that he have established a pen manufacturing factory. And with the 50 rupees he have taken, he also established, a, imagine it, he established a food manufacturing factory. So he established a pen manufacturing factory and he established a food manufacturing factory. Now see, in order to work, he employed two persons in this and he also employed two persons, right? Now try to understand these two guys will work in this factory and they are going to receive the salary. And these two guys are also going to work in this factory and they are going to receive the salary. Now with the salaries they have received from this factory, say for example, the working people who is working in the food manufacturing factory is going to receive the salary from here and they are going to demand the goods produced in the pen manufacturing factory. Right? They are going to purchase those goods. Now, similarly, the workers in the pen manufacturing factory is going to get the salaries and they are going to demand the goods produced in the food manufacturing factory. Now, try to understand if two pens are produced and two food items are produced, totally the four items are produced. And these two people is demanding these goods and these two people also demanding these goods. So, cumulatively, the four items are produced. And imagine if one item is 10 rupees, so 4 into 10 is 40. Now, you all know that the final monetary value of the goods and services, the monetary value of final goods and services is nothing but GDP of the country. So, these are the four final goods which are ultimately consumed by the people and the prices of these goods is each one is 10 rupees. So, ultimately the GDP of that particular country is equal to 40 rupees. Now, I, ho I hope you understood it. So the bank is providing a loan of 100 rupees and two people took it 50 rupees and 50 rupees and with the loan that they have taken they have established a pen manufacturing factory and food manufacturing factory and in order to run this factory of course they need to employ some people right now they have employed two people here and they have employed two people here now these two people by working in this pen manufacturing factory took the salary and with the salary received they have demanded the goods right the food manufacturing factory from the food manufacturing factory similarly these two guys also done now when they have demanded the goods definitely they are going to get produced in that factory now you all know that the final monetary value of goods and services produced in the economy is called gdp now the gdp of this particular economy is the simple this in this example is 40 rupees now let us consider another situation now instead of 100 rupees imagine if the bank have given 200 rupees of the loan now what happens if bank gives 200 rupees of the loan if bank gives 200 of the room now two more persons will be added and these persons might contribute another 40 rupees to it so cumulatively the gdp will become 80 rupees the gdp might get increased now that's the reason why in why the savings in an economy is considered as investment the savings in an economy is considered as investments Right? So, in such a way, with 100 rupees, we got the 40 rupees GDP and with 200 rupees, we get the 80 rupees GDP. Now, this is an example for which I have given you. So, to understand the things with the savings and with the investment, how the GDP in an economy will grow. Now, from this, what you have understood? See, the banks and every other NBFCs or whatever the organization is, the financial institutions would be ready enough, should be ready enough to provide the money for the investors so that they will set up the economic units in such a way and they will provide the employment. With the employment, if the people get the employment, definitely they are going to receive the salary and with that they are going to demand the goods and services. In such a way, the economy of any country or any economy is going to get generated or going to get growth. So, try to understand. Now, in such a way, the supply of money from these financial institutions is very much important. Right? This is the conclusion what you have come for. Supply from the money, these kind of financial institutions, 
is very much important money supply by these kind of financial institutions is very much important for the growth of the economy now okay this is case one now what about the case two let us try to understand case two now you may have already know that you know you already heard about the term called inflation in fact in our previous class itself i have clearly explained you how to we calculate the inflation in an economy right see the percentage change in the price index of current year with compared to the previous year is called the price this inflation in an economy now we have discussed about it very clearly now try to understand if see if more and more people adds to it if more people see if more people gets added to it to the list now what happens if more people have the money in their hands what is going to happen you all know that if people have more money in their hands they are going to demand more goods and services by that logic if people demands more and more goods and services definitely their prices is going to get increased you know that when something is demanded more their price will get increased right now when the prices is increasing of goods and services what do we call it we call it as inflation we call inflation now if inflation goes on continuously it is not good for the economy everybody knows that the price stabilization see inflation is nothing but controlling the inflation means maintaining the stabilization of the prices of goods and services inflation means general rise in the increase of general rise in the prices of goods and services you know that now stabilizing the prices means decreasing the inflation rate i hope it is very clear now it is a proven fact that the inflation should be in control for a sustainable growth and development of any economy see so if the banks goes on providing more and more money supply into the economy the people will get more money and with the money they have got they are going to demand more and more services if they demand more goods and services definitely they are, there is going to be an inflation in the economy now see try to understand on one hand we need to ensure the money supply for the growth in such a way on the other hand we should decrease we should reduce the money supply to in order to control the inflation try to understand on one hand see we need to ensure the money supply in the economy for the growth in such a way on the other hand we should reduce the money supply in an economy to control the inflation to control the inflation now comes the question main question main question what is the optimal level of money supply should be ensured in an economy so that both the growth both the growth as well as the inflation will be in control see try to understand now just i have explained you the money supply in an economy is essential for the growth see if 100 is turned to 200 rupees how the growth of the country is increasing how the 100 can be two, turned into 200 if rbi is allows if rbi allows the banks and rest of the financial institutions to provide more and more money supply you have discussed these things very clearly in our money market topics right now if uh, in such a way if money supply in an economy is increasing the growth can be ensured but on the other hand you also know that if more and more money supply is happening it leads to inflation now the money supply should be in such a way that it should be an optimal level such that both the growth will be ensured as well as price stabilization is in control price stabilization will be maintained in an economy now comes the question what is that optimal level now tell me what is that optimal level where the inflation is reduced the prices is stabilized on the other hand where the growth is continued that inflation that level is nothing but our flexible inflation target of 4 plus or minus 2 everybody knows that currently we have a flexible inflation target of 4 plus or minus 2 what does it mean the inflation need to be maintained between 4 percentage to between 2 percentage to 6 percentage by the rbi the rbi is the institution which is mandated to maintain the inflation between 2 percentage to 6 percentage try to understand try to understand now imagine if the inflation in the economy is 3 percentage inflation in the economy is 3 percentage now rbi will push the money into the economy rbi will push the money into the economy till the inflation rate reaches 6 percent you know the meaning of pushing the money in the inflation when pushing the money in the economy see guys now let me give let me give the example of two tools say for example you all know about the repo rate you all know about the repo rate we also discussed about the reverse repo right reverse repo we discussed about the bank rate in such a way there are a lot of tools available with the rbi either to increase the money supply either to decrease the money supply let the let us take the example of two cases see let us take the example of these three important tools available with the rbi with which how the rbi is going to either increase the money supply or decrease the money supply now what is the repo rate now tell me guys see let try to understand see what is a repo rate 
repo rate is the rate at which RBI is going to extend the loans for the commercial banks. Repo rate is the rate at which RBI is going to extend the loans for the commercial banks. You know that. But you need to understand it is for short term purpose. It is for short term by mortgaging the government securities. RBI extends the loans for the short term period by mortgaging the government securities under a rate called repo rate. Right. Now, many of you might get confused that in case of reverse repo rate. What is a reverse repo rate? It is not that it is not that RBI taking the loans from the banks. It is not the rate at which RBI pays that interest rate for the banks. Try to understand. Banks will have a lot of surplus money. Try to understand during the COVID-19 pandemic. During COVID-19 pandemic, as see, not during COVID-19 pandemic, during the demonetization, during the demonetization, what happened? Many of the people in the economy have deposited their money in the banks. During demonetization, in order to exchange their old notes, old bank notes with the new notes, many of the people have deposited that bank notes in the banks. Now, the banks is now laded with a lot of money. Now, try to understand and that situation, nobody is willing to take the loan. Now, what's the option available with the banks? Now, banks is going to place that money with the RBI. Now, banks is going to place that money with the RBI. The rate, the interest rate given by the RBI for the banks, for the money they have placed with the RBI is called reverse repo rate. Imagine I have a bank. Now, my bank is loaded with a lot of money because of demonetization. Now, if I want to keep 10,000 crores with the bank, 10,000 crores with the RBI, then the RBI is going to provide me the reverse repo rate. Right? I hope it is very clear. Now, but here also we have a provision called mortgaging the government securities. Say for example, I have a bank, I have a bank and I have placed 10,000 crores with the RBA. Now, RBA is going to give me 10,000 worth of 10,000 worth of securities, government securities as mortgaging, right? This is just a procedure if in case, it's kind of a procedure. Now, this is the meaning of reverse repo rate and repo rate. We have already discussed about it. And what's a bank rate? Unlike repo rate, repo rate and bank rate are both the same, right? Both repo rate and the bank rate are one and the same. It is that RBI is going to give the loans, extend the funds for the commercial banks. But in case of repo rate, the repo rate is the rate at which the RBI extends the loans for the short term purpose by mortgaging government securities. But in case of bank rate, the rate at which RBI extends the loans for the banks, but, but for the long term period, but without mortgaging the government securities. This is the main thing. Now try to understand. Imagine if it's a bank. Now you imagine you are the person. Now imagine currently the bank is providing a loan at 10% in interest rate, right? Now the bank get the loans at the repo rate for this, right? Now try to understand the bank is paying 5% repo rate for the RBI and it is collecting 10% upon you. Now all of us should try to understand if RBI increases the repo rate to 10%, 5% increase, definitely he is also going to increase that interest rate to 5%, right? Your interest rate, the, the effective interest rate for you becomes 15%. Now, do you think you are going to take that loan from the banks at highest 15% interest rate? No, nobody, no, people will never try to, people never will to take the loans from the banks with this high level of interest rate. In such a way, the money supply will be decreased. Now, all of a sudden, if the RBI decreases this 5% to 2%, now definitely the interest rate of 10% is going to decrease to 8 percentage right you can understand it now if you heard that if the bank is providing the loans at a lower interest rate definitely is going to go there and you are going to have that loan right in such a way the money supply with the public money supply in the economy will be increased so either by increasing or that decreasing say if the rba increases the repo rate money supply will be decreased if rba decreases the repo rate money supply will be increased now in such a way by govern rba have a lot of tools not only repo rate reverse repo rate bank rate right in such a way with the rba have this uh, crar in such a way it have a lot of tools through which it is going to control the money supply the main purpose of me telling you about these important tools is you have to understand that rba have a lot of of tools available with it through which the RBI is going to either increase the money supply or to decrease the money supply. The RBI will increase the money supply. Now let us come back to our inflation thing 4 plus or minus 2. The RBI will use these important tools either to see now the example in our example the inflation rate is 3 percentage. Now RBI will increase the money supply in the economy 
till it reaches 6 percentage now once the inflation rate reaches the 6 percentage now what it going to do now it is going to increase all these key interest rates and now it is going to bring back the money supply in the economy if money supply is reduced automatically the people don't have the money and if people don't have the money definitely they are not going to demand the goods if the people is not demanding the goods automatically the prices of the goods will come down and the inflation rate again falls from 6 percentage to 5 4 3 and in such a way and the RBI will do it until it reaches and until it reaches 2 percentage and if RBI believes if it is reducing below 2 percentage then again it will start pushing the money by using these kind of tools into the economy I hope you understood so that is the optimal level which is decided by both the government as well as RBI the central bank right that is the optimal level which ensures both growth in the economy as well as money sub as well as price stabilization in the economy try to understand this is what we have studied so ensuring the money supply is very much important for the growth in such a way but on the other hand more and more money supply will lead to inflation now what's the optimal level 4 plus or minus 2 the govern the rbi will allow well rbi will push the money supply into the economy till the inflation does not exceed six percentage and all of rbi the rbi decreases rbi decreases the money supply till the inflation rate reaches two and it should not fall below two right so in such a way the four plus or minus two maintaining the inflation rate between 4 plus or minus 2 and pushing the money accordingly is the optimal level through which both the growth will be ensured as well as inflation will be in stable right i hope you understood it now when it comes to the current affair what is rbi is focusing now instead of increasing the money supply rbi is saying that try to understand the article now rbi is sektikan das is saying that till now we have maintained the key repo rate at 4 percentage which means it is an accommodative accommodative monetary policy now try to understand achieving the objectives of both the growth as well as maintaining the price stabilization are the two twin objectives of the monetary policy try to understand rbi by using those tools like repo rate reverse repo rate and this bank rate and also we have the crar the rbi will use these kind of different tools available with it and will either increase the money supply or will decrease the money supply now Optimal level is 4 plus or minus 2. RBI will push the money supply into the economy where the inflation either should not increase 6 percentage or it should not decrease 2 percentage. Now, this is considered as the optimal level by both the government as well as RBI to achieve this growth as well as price stabilization so that we have the sustainable development. I hope you understood. Now, what is RBI is saying is now RBI is saying that till two years for the past two years we are maintaining we are having accommodative monetary policy what is the meaning of it accommodation means accommodation means easy monetary policy what is the meaning of easy monetary policy simply to put it in layman language rbi kept on increasing the money supply recently the inflation rate have reached 6.1 percentage now if the money sub see for the past two years rbi is following accommodative monetary policy accommodative policy what does that mean rbi is increasing the money supply now if increasing the money supply continues for a longer period of time as i said it is going to lead to inflation now if it is going beyond six percentage definitely inflation rate is going on now in such situations the rbi need to decrease the money supply so that the people will have less money supply when the people have less money they are going to demand less goods and services when they demand less definitely the prices will come down now this is what rbi is saying rbi to focus on inflation and not growth because it is for the last two years it is doing the same and now the inflation is exceeding beyond the limit of six percentage right i hope you understood the thing now for the last three years the growth was ahead the inflation ahead the inflation in spite of they have not concentrated on inflation they have concentrated on the growth now it is being reversed rbi started withdrawing some of the accommodation it had provided for the last two years right i hope you understood the article very clearly now as i said these are the enhancing the growth rate as well as maintaining the price stabilization are the twin objectives of the monetary policy which is done by the rbi in the country right now this is about the inflation and what this also said is what Shiktikan Das and RBI has also said is Mr. Das said that MPC had decided monetary policy committee has decided to revise the inflation projections for the financial year 2023 upwards with the estimation of quarter 1 at 6.3 and to quarter 4 5.1 right now try to understand see due to the Ukraine and Russian crisis and increase in the feed prices for the poultry and rest of the items the inflation is going to get increased 
right now rbi decided they are going to lower the money supply when they lower the money supply for a temporary period of time the growth will be at a normal level growth will be at a normal pace so this is the reason why we have see why i have said that why they have changed the estimations when they have predicted before the russian ukraine crisis right he pointed to the sharp increase in the crude oil prices of the crude oil edible oil and wheat prices and the cost of feed which has purchased which has pushed the prices of the poultry egg and dairy right due to these reasons these reasons inflation will increase now as they are concentrating the inflation the money supply will be decreased when the money supply decreases temporary for a temporary period of time the growth will be at a normal rate right so this is about this article i hope you understood very clearly right just try to revise this whole whole topic once or twice you will get a good perspective with respect to the indian economy right next next topic is the standing deposit facility sdf it's very much important topic right guys see just now we have discussed about the reverse repo rate what is the reverse repo rate it is the rate which rbi pays to the banks for which see imagine i have a bank and i have placed my money with the rbi now what's the rate i get for placing my money with the rbi is called reverse repo rate right now you have to understand reverse repo rate say for example see we have discussed about the demonetization situation during demonetization each and everybody you me and everybody all over the country have deposited their world bank notes 500 notes and 1000 notes with the banks with their respective commercial banks now during that situation the banks are loaded with a lot of money isn't it everybody submitting everybody depositing their demonetization notes so as a result of it the banks are laden with a lot of money now what's the tool available with it the the main option available with it? see no bank is going to maintain the cash idle they are commercial banks they want to use that money now what's the options available for the commercial banks to use that deposited money either they give it in the loan or they can place it with the rbi at a reverse repo rate now what happened is now during that situation we don't have that kind of a situation in the economy the banks cannot give all that money which they have deposited which they got from their consumers customers to the other customers as a loans because nobody is taking the loans during that period now option available with it is say for example they want to give see if they got 100 rupees they have two options they can provide it as a loan either they can place it with the banks they can place it with the rbi under reverse repo rate they can place it with the rbi under reverse repo rate imagine the interest rate for the people is 10 percentage and if the banks places this money with the rbi the rbi is going to pay them 7 percentage now which is more safer nobody knows if a person takes the loans he may pay it or he may not pay it but when the bank places that money with the rbi definitely they have some security so that's the reason many of the banks want to place that money many of the banks have want to place that their money which is came to the demonetization effect with the rbi under reverse repo rate but you need to understand for the reverse repo rate also the bank say for example i have a bank and see i want to place my 100 rupees with the rbi now if i place 100 rupees with the rbi definitely rbi is going to pay me the reverse repo rate it's okay but it is also going to give me the equivalent amount of government securities now this is the scenario this is how reverse repo rate works now do you think the rbi is going to have that much lakhs and lakhs crores of government securities to provide it to all the banks in the country under the reverse repo rate it is not possible it is not possible so government see the rbi came up with a new initiative called standing deposit facility sdf standing deposit facility now it is in fact came it is an idea during the urjit patel situation so now try to understand the difference between the reverse repo rate and repo rate the reverse repo rate and standing deposit facility they are designed for the same purpose only in the reverse repo rate the banks will place money with the rbi for which they will get the rate reverse repo rate interest right the rate at which the banks will place the money with the rbi is called reverse repo rate similarly sdf is also the rate at which the banks places their money with the rbi but in case of re reverse repo rate the rbi will give the mortgage and government the rbi will give the government securities as a mortgage for the banks but in case of sdf there is no any kind of government security given by the rbi for the banks for the deposits that they have placed with the rbi i hope you clear i hope it is very clear 
Now, this came into force in 2018, the amended section 17, by amending the section 17 of RBI Act of 1934, this kind of SDF came into play. You know, try to understand. With the reverse repo rate, the government needs to give the government, government securities as collateral. It is not possible. The, government, the RBI is not going to have that much. See, that's, but the banks want to place the money with the RBI. Now, they come up with this kind of initiatives where the banks can place their money with this special deposit facility, but no government securities are mortgaged in between. Right? I hope it is clear. By removing the binding collateral constraints on the RBI, the SDF, SDF strengthens the framework of monetary policy. Right? This is about that. SDF. Now you need to understand there is a facility called marginal standing facility. Right? Now if a bank, see bank needs to maintain the CRR, SLR on a daily basis which they need to report it at a fortnight for the RBI. Now all of a sudden see if the banks falls in a liquidity crisis for a short term period. Now if no bank is ready to ready and willing to lend that money for that particular bank. Now the lender of lost resort is RBI. And the RBI is going to provide for such kind of a banks under this marginal standing facility. Now RBI Siktikan Das have clearly stated that the SDF and marginal standing facility are the two options available for the banks at their discretion. It is their discretion. If banks want to take it, they want to, they will take it. If they don't want, they don't want it. But in case of rest of the tools like repo and reverse repo and bank rate and each and everything, it is the discretion of RBI. As RBI says, the banks should do. As far as this SDF and marginal standing facility is concerned, it is the discretion of the banks. So you need to be very careful. UPS is going to ask this kind of equations. And even SDF, you have to remember it. It is very much important from your prelims perspective. It is going to work just like the reverse repo rate. But in case of reverse repo rate, for the money the banks placed with the RBI, the RBI is going to give the government securities. But in case of SDF it is not there right I hope it is very clear next now the main purpose of SDF is to reduce the excess liquidity of 8.5 lakh crores in the system and control the inflation now see for example if bank have 100 rupees if bank have 100 rupees take the same old example if it wants to give the loans to the consumers if it wants to leave the loans to the consumers, it is it might be at 7%. Now, if RBI says the SDF, if banks places their money under SDF, they are going to get 5% or 4%. Now, even though the interest, the, the rate of the cost, see, the rate of money that the banks will get by placing their money with the RBI is low, but their money is very secure. When they give that loan to the public, it is there is no 100% guarantee that that person is going to pay back that money. So, the banks will choose for security and definitely they are going to place that money with the RBI. Now in such a way the liquidity in the economy will get reduced. So the SDF rate will be 25 basis point below the policy rate. Below the policy rate means key rate. Now currently it is 4 percentage it is 2 about 3.75 percentage. Now try to understand 100 basis points is equal to 100 basis points is equal to 1 percentage. Try to remember it. Now see. Now this is about that SDF. I hope it is very clear. Next topic we have is the fortification of rice. See, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs have approved supply of fortified rice in all states and union territories by 2024 and 2025 in a phased manner. Now, in a nutshell, let me give you what is this fortified rice and what is the fortification of rice. See, try to understand. Imagine these are the rice grains. Imagine these are the rice grains. You know that many of the people in the country are facing a very pro important problems like micronutrients deficiency, malnutrition, undernutrition. The people, the children particularly, children and women are facing these kind of a problems. Now, how to address these problems? Now, if we are able to give, we are able to provide all these different kinds of micronutrients to those people, to those affected people and vulnerable people through the staple crop itself what they eat, then we can address these kind of a concerns. Now try to understand, he is a person, he is a person, he is a family who don't have enough nutrition and their staple crop is rice and their stable crop is rice. Now try to understand how food fortification works. Now imagine, now this is the rice and all these rice is turned into a flour or to put it in a layman language, powder. The rice is crushed to a powder. 
now with for that powder the important vitamins what they want to get added say for example vitamin a vitamin d vitamin b and rest of the folic acid amino acids and all these kind of micronutrients will be added to that powder and this powder is placed in a machine and this machine is going to return this powder into rice grains and that rice grains is going to look similar to the original rice grains and now this rice is called fortified rice this is how the fortification will be done the powder will be placed in this machinery and this machine is going to turn that powder again into a rice grains like in the molds they are going to get turned into rice which looks similar to the original rice and then that rice will be mixed with the original rice say for example if we have 1 kg of normal rice and in this 1 kg of rice 100 grams say for example 900 grams of normal rice and 100 grams of this fortified rice will be mixed and there is no separate procedure required to cook it as like we cook the normal rice or normal wheat or whatever the crop it is fortified we can do it in the same way so that all these family members will get the micro see the nutrients micronutrients in which they are currently at a deficient right i hope you clearly understood what it is for the food fortification in a nutshell see as far as this definitions is concerned, according to the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, FASI, it involves deliberate increasing of the content of essential micronutrients like this way, folic acid, amino acids, B12, in such a way, the increasing of the content of essential micronutrients in the food so as to improve the nutritional quality of the food and to provide public health benefits with a minimal risk. See, now as far as the need for the fortification is concerned, see, India has a very high levels of malnutrition among the women and children. According to the food ministry, every second woman in the country is anemic and every third child is stunted. Now what is the meaning of anemic? Anemia is a problem which is commonly seen these days in the women, right? If they don't take enough iron content, these kind of a problems is found in them. Now what is the meaning of stunted? Stunted and wasted. You need to understand the basic the meanings of all these important terms stunted means if a person don't grow according to the height as per his height as per his age he is not of that height right we call that persons as stunted right now wasted means no weight according to the height is called wasted so these are the problems main common kind of a problems that we feel, we usually see among the children and women in india fortification of food is considered to be the one of the most suitable methods to combat these kind of malnutrition kind of situations in the country so therefore fortified rice with micronutrients is an option to supplement the diet of the poor as i said in this example right i hope you understood it now see how the fortification is done see as i said the mix the dry rice flour is mixed with the micronutrients and then it is passed into the kernels and with that these kernels are dry these are not nothing but say cooled and packaged these are going to see this is kind of missionary say as i said the normal rice is going to get powdered and that for that powder all the micronutrients will be added and that powder is again turned into the rice grains and that rice grains is mixed with the normal rice and is provided to the families and the people who are facing this micronutrient deficiencies this is how it is going to work now when we look at the advantages of the fortified rice see it is going to ensure the health we know about it it is going to it is not going to destroy our taste because if the fortified rice will be mixed with the normal rice the normal taste for which the people get habituated is not going to get offended now not going to get offended right society it upholds everyone's rights to act access to safe and nutritious food and as far as economy is concerned the price increase for the fortified rice is approximately 1 to 2 percentage of the total food value it can be bearable at the cost of decreasing or eliminating the micronutrient deficiency problem in the country right i hope you understood now as far as the issues with the fortified rice is concerned many argue that it is against the nature see fortification and enrichment upsets nature packaging it is said by somebody it is a concern it is a issue with these kind of micronutrient deficiencies now as far as the bioavailability the supplements added to the foods are less bioavailable and we have the immunity issues and they lack immune boosting substances so over nutrition the fortified foods and the supplements can pose specific risk for the people who are taking the prescription medicines this is also another concern which is raised by these people right which is by the experts many experts in the economy so this is about the fortified rice and fortified crops right just try to have a look at it 
Now next topic we have is the India Australia sign economic cooperation and trade agreement India and Australia see Australia and India are the two colonial countries we see that Australia and India share the common colonial legacy and we have a lot of uh, see common inheritances between both the countries say for example we have the cricket which we took from the colonialism right now the country's leaders both from India as well as Australia want to bring these kind of relations between the countries to a next level see till now we have the strongest relations with respect to the cricket and we also have a strongest relations with respect to the defense we are a part of a quad and now the countries wants to bring this step being this cooperation between the countries to an above level now this is resulted in the india australia signing the economic cooperation and trade agreement now you should be very careful with respect to it now whenever see if upsc asks the question now what they are going to do is now ecta economic cooperation and trade agreement is commonly seen in news these days with respect to india and australia this is how they are going to work everybody knows see in fact in our economy and static syllabus we have discussed that what an economic cooperation is all about see between india and australia there are lot of goods and services will be traded now among these goods traded between both the countries the governments concerned is going to impose a lot of tariff barriers and non tariff barriers now whenever the countries enter into this kind of economic cooperation and trade agreements definitely they are going to reduce this tariffs and non tariff barriers on most of the goods and services and also they are going to maintain a minimum level of the tariffs on both the goods and services which are traded between these two countries in a similar way about 85% of the goods and services traded between the countries are reduced in their tariffs now not only the the matter does not end there see the labor intensive indian sector such as textiles gems and jewelry leather food and farm produce all these sectors is going to get benefited the working group to explore the market access issues for the both sides in right in the alcoholic products is also going on see even these days see with the if the agreement comes into operation earlier the time given for the students who studies in the australia is very much less now the students can live for a longer period of time and even they can have the economic opportunities and job opportunities after their graduation can be found in the australia now once this operation once this agreement comes into the force all this can be ensured so this is all about this india and australia's economic cooperation and trade agreement and see this is all about it and next the last important topic that we have for the day is supreme court to hear the plea of electoral bond scheme it is not a new thing electoral bond is a old topic but we are very which concerned with respect to this electoral bonds as far as the upsc is concerned say for example there is a party now what is going to happen now you are you need to donate money to that particular party now you need to go to a sba bank branch by purchase an electoral bond and you can donate it to any particular party for which you want to donate it see the electoral bonds are the banking instruments that can be purchased by any citizen or company to make donate to the political parties without the donor's identity being disclosed without the donor's identity who is donating to that particular party being disclosed not being disclosed you can donate the money so it is like a promissory note that can brought by any indian or any citizen company eligibility to purchase an electoral bond is very much important for the upsc perspective now see the citizens of the corporate can then donate the same the electoral bond to any eligible political party of his choice of his interests right now such bonds can be purchased for any value in the multiples of 1000 rupees 10000 rupees 10 lakh and even 1 crore in the specified branches of the state bank of india and you need to understand the bonds will have a life of 15 days right and after that see before before which you need to donate it to the party for which you have chosen so the donors who contribute you need to be very careful with respect to this point the donors who contribute less than 20000 to a political parties through the purchase of the electoral bonds need not provide their identity details such as the permanent account number right this is very much important now only those political parties registered under the section 29a of the representation of the people act you might have studied about the representation of the people act in your polity right 
1951 and which secured not less than one percentage of the votes polled in the last general elections to the Lok Sabha State Legislature Assembly shall be eligible to receive the electoral bonds. Now, who is eligible to purchase it and who is eligible to receive it and in what multiples the amount will be received and at what amount if the donor gives his identity not to be revealed. So, all these points with respect to the electoral bonds are very much important from the UPSC perspective. So, this is all about these electoral bonds. So, uh, guys, I hope you understood all these important economic current affairs, particularly the twin objectives of the monetary policy very well. Developing these kind of perspectives in the economy is very much important to understand a lot of topics. So, just try to revise those topics once or twice so that so try to look at these topics once or twice so that the subject will be the topics and current affairs will be very clear in your mind. So, I hope you enjoyed this class and also understood this class very well. Thank you and stay connected with the Rathods IAS for the rest of the economic weekly series. Thank you.